So in last uh, part uh, we have discussed the tensile failure of fork and the equation of tensile stress was sigma t is equal to p upon twice a into do minus d. Now let us discuss the shear failure of fork. So this is the fork and these are the two ends of this fork. So this is the top end of fork and this is bottom end of fork. So thickness of this both the fork end is a and the outer diameter of both the fork end is do and inner diameter of both the fork end is d. So with this uh, dimension now let us uh, talk about the shear failure of fork. Now in the shear failure the this much portion this much portion of uh, this fork will get shear off so from the bottom end of this fork and from this top end of fork so this much portion and from bottom uh, fork end this much portion get shear off that is it will get cut from this fork end and it will get removed similarly this much portion of this fork end will get cut from this fork end and it will get removed from this fork ends and uh, we can draw this uh, diagram of this failure of this fork in shear so let us draw this uh, diagram now you can see in this picture uh, as i discussed earlier so from this top fork end this much portion of this fork will get removed get, will get sheared off and it will come out from this top fork end Similarly, this much portion of this fork end will get sheared off, will get cut it from this bottom end of fork and it will get removed like this. So, this uh, type of uh, failure is called as double shear failure because this type of uh, shear failure takes place in the two planes. So, this is the first plane of failure and this is the second plane of failure. Similarly, this uh, for bottom fork end the failure takes place in the two planes that is this is the first plane and this is the second plane so that's why this type of failure is called as a double shear failure and uh, so this is the first this is the first plane of failure and uh, it gives us one area of this component for one area of this portion which is nothing but the area subjected to shear stress now this is the first area now the second area is exactly behind of this uh, portion so which can be shown in this with this dotted line which is exactly beyond behind this area number one so this is the second area then this second area is for, for the second plane of failure and this area number one is for first plane of failure now similarly here this is the first plane of failure for this first plane of failure for this bottom end this is the corresponding area in which the failure occurs so this is the area number three and for this second uh, plane of failure this is the area which is subjected to shear stress and this area number four is exactly behind this behind as that of this area number three which is shown by this dotted line so total we have four areas which is subjected to shear stress so we can write here like this so this area one two three and four are subjected to shear stress and therefore if you look at this area number one it is a rectangular and its height is equal to the thickness of fork end thickness of fork end is small a so we can write this height of this rectangular area is a now just look at this width so this width of uh, this rectangular is equal to thickness of this hollow cylindrical fork and thickness of this hollow cylindrical fork is equal to outer diameter du minus inner diameter d upon 2 gives us the thickness of this fork end that is thickness of this hollow cylindrical fork end it is equal to do outer diameter minus d inner diameter upon 2 so we can write this distance is equal to 
do minus d upon 2 so this rectangular has height a and width do minus d upon 2 same dimensions are for this area number 2 same dimensions are for this area number 3 that is height is a and this width is equal to thickness of that hollow cylindrical fork end that is do minus d upon 2 and same area is for this rectangular area number 4 which is exactly behind this area 3 so now let us calculate let us calculate this total area so therefore total area subjected to shear stress is equal to 4 into area of single rectangle area of single rectangle why we have multiplied by 4 because here total we have 4 rectangles rectangle number 1 rectangle number 2 which is exactly behind of this rectangle number 1 this rectangle number 3 and this is a rectangular area number 4 so we have 4 rectangles 4 rectangular areas so if we calculate the area of one rectangle we can multiply by 4 to get the total area so 4 into area of this one rectangle or single rectangular is a into d0 minus d upon 2 so height is a and width is d0 or do minus d upon 2 so if we simplify this we will get twice a into do minus d and this is the area total area subjected to shear stress this is the area subjected to shear stress now let us calculate now let us calculate or let us derive the equation of shear stress in fork so let us derive the equation of shear stress in fork so we can denote this shear stress by tau is equal to p upon a so as we know for the force applied on this fork end is p which is balanced by this p by 2 p by 2 on each fork end and area is twice a do minus d so we can write p as it is and a is twice a do minus d so this is the equation of shear stress in this fork end where tau is the direct shear stress induced in this fork end p is the external force applied a is the thickness of this fork end do is the outer diameter of fork end and d is the inner diameter of this fork end so with this uh, equation we have completed the failures of this fork that is first failure we have seen tensile failure of fork and now this is the shear failure of fork